for arc length and areas of sectors. We have two main segments in, in a circle based on the center. If we have from the center to a point on the circle's radius, if we have a segment whose endpoints are on the circle, so a segment with endpoints on the circle. This is called a chord. Now, if a chord goes through the center. So this chord goes through the center. You could have a chord that does this. Doesn't hit the center. But if you have a chord that goes through the center, it is called a diameter. And the diameter, it essentially cuts a circle in half. So if the chord contains the center, if the center is a point right in the middle there, then it cuts a circle in half. But also, since we have the center, if we just go from this center to this point, that's a radius. If we go from this center, that's a, from, if we go from the center to that point A, that's a radius. So how many radiuses make up a diameter? Two. So we can say that the di diameter is equal to two times the radius. If we want to talk about the length. So diameter is equal to two times the radius. Now, and I know this is not doing it any justice whatsoever. When mathematicians first started really examining circles. They found that if they were able to take, if I started at A and measured all the way around the circle and got back to A, that's called a circumference. So a circumference is equal to the distance around the circle. And what mathematicians did were they would measure the length of the circumference. And they were just looking for any type of pattern. And they f measured the diameter and they started comparing the numbers. One of the things that you do when you compare numbers is you divide the numbers. And at times, you probably saw this when you were dealing with some different relations in Algebra 1, was if you divide the number and you keep on getting the same number over and over and over again, that indicates that there's a, a really strong relationship between those. Uh, well, when they took the circumference, and divided it by its diameter, they kept on getting a number. And back then, they could only, they didn't have the technology to get it really accurate. They were able to get it to something like this. And then eventually, later on, like we're talking hundreds of years later, tools became a lot more precise so we were able to calculate it out farther now what do we call that number 3.14 pi this is the number that's 
we refer to today as pi. Now, up until the late 1700s, in the 1780s or something like that, they always called this number the ratio of the circumference to the diameter of a circle. Instead of just saying pi, because pi actually represented something else. Then all the math, the big math people, the big wigs, got together and said, uh, we'll call this that, and then we'll use pi for this idea. So we don't have to write the ratio of the circumference to the diameter every single time. But for every circle that's out there, whether you take something like this, you take the inner circle here, the outer circle there, whatever it is, that's the outer part of the, the cardboard circle. You measure that length, then you measure its diameter, you divide them, you're going to get pi as your answer. It works for every single circle, which is why we use pi a lot and why whenever we have a circle, pi is something that we're going to end up using. And pi comes into play big when we're talking about circumference and area. So if we're talking about circumference, We knew this. We knew circumference divided by diameter was equal to pi. If you multiply both sides by, I'll just say d for the diameter, circumference is equal to the diameter times pi And we usually just write it down, circumference, capital C, is equal to pi times the diameter. We also use C is equal to, since I know that the diameter is also 2 of the radii, pi times 2 times the radius, we also kind of write it as 2 pi r. Now the area is pi times the radius squared. So like I said previously, these two equations are equations that you need to know. There's something else you need to know about circles. There's two ways that you can measure things in circles. So let me draw another circle here. Oh, that circle didn't come out good at all. Let me draw another circle. Alright, not the best circle on the planet, but it is a circle. If, say that's C, that's your center, that's A, that's B, and say that's D. Now, if we're going to measure the angle that goes all the way around the circle, How much is the angle that goes all the way around the circle? The 
It's 360 degrees. So from, if I started here, went all the way around the circle, it's 360 degrees. But we can also talk about this in terms of circumference. If this has a radius of 1, if your radius is 1, This is equal to 2 pi times 1, which is just 2 pi. These are called radians. And when we're talking about angles, let's say I make an angle here, and this is 45 degrees. Well, 45 degrees is going to cut into the circle this, this part of the circle is called an arc this arc is measured In radians. Radians, and this is a big, big, big idea. Radians are another way to kind of measure the angle because a 45 degree angle, when your radius is 1, is going to cut a certain part of the circle off. And this part this radian is going to be able to relate to how many degrees you have. Now the conversion factor three hundred and sixty degrees, which would go all the way around the circle. Now, if the radius is 1, if the radius is 1, what's the circumference? If I started here and went all the way around and my radius was 1, so the conversion factor is always going to be 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. If you want to get fancy, divide everything by 2, you get 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. So if I tell you that, for example, the radius, or not the radius, but the angle is 45 degrees. How many radians? Well, this is your unit analysis. 45 degrees. Now, I can use either one. I can take and say, all right, I want to get rid of degrees, so I'm going to put degrees in the bottom, 180 degrees, and that's going to be equal to pi because the degrees are going to divide out because just like in chemistry that's what we end up with now 45 goes into here how many times 45 90 135 180 this is actually equal to pi divided by 4 radians so like I said, this is part one, and we're going to talk about the next part of it tomorrow.